Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm excited to share with you today how I built a tractor cab for my Kubota L3301. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I'm pretty excited that I've got it done. So let's get to it. Here I am going through cutting and welding a series of 3 16 inch by 4 inch flat steel uh, so I can wrap it around the ROP system on my tractor. Here I am cutting and welding 1 inch by 14 gauge square tubing and bolting it to the tractor. Uh, very common through this entire process, I use that 1 inch by 14 gauge square tubing along with a lot of 7 16 grade uh, grade 8 bolts as well and the bottom under those 1 inch square tubings to help kind of with the bi vibration of things I decided it'd be a pretty good idea to use some type of rubber pad so I used a quarter inch by four foot wide rubber pad cut down to size I did have a couple goals while building this tractor cab the first was to build it in a way that I did not modify the existing ROP system, so no grinding, welding, or any kind of altering whatsoever of that entire ROPS, uh, you know, over, over the driver. So that's why I decided to use those, those bolts in order to attach the, the frame. The other thing I wanted to do is make it to where if I just absolutely had to, I could remove it from the tractor cab. Now I'll kind of ruin it for you at the end. There would be some places I would have to take off some of the plexiglass and cut a couple places with the steel in order to take it off, but it would be relatively easy to take it off if I needed to. And lastly, going through building this, I wanted to make it to where when this was complete, the driver of the, of the tractor could see all the existing places that he or she normally could before the cab was added on. This was important to me because obviously whenever you're driving a tractor cab, you wanna be able to see your tires, you wanna be able to see what you're lifting up, what's beside you, what's behind you. So I did a, design it in a way that a person driving this thing could see all the way around you, except for obviously on the top. I wanted to design it to where you could keep the sun off of you. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that I want it to be fully serviceable with the tractor cab still on it. So for example, I still wanna be able to get to the fuel separator, the water fuel separator, uh, down on the right bottom hand side on the driver's side, as well as the hydraulic couplings for the loader bucket. I think I forgot to mention earlier how I put in these lateral supports. I simply just used a plumb bulb to help line those up. And then with the lateral pieces, I tried to make sure that the tractor was on the most level ground I could get it on, but I just used a level along with the measuring tape to kind of determine how far away I should get on those, on those loader arms. Something I did need to double check going through this process is I did lift those loader arms all the way up to the top to make sure that those arms weren't going to conflict with my cab design here. Something else I didn't get to mention earlier is I used a pump jack jig to help form around the, the wheel wells there using uh, one inch by 13 gauge round tubing. Worked really well. That's what I used also for those handles right there um, to get into the tractor as well as on the door handle. Here I am welding on heavy duty four inch hinges to the main door. I was talking about this build with my neighbor and he had a really good idea of making it to where you can remove the door, which I thought was a really good idea simply because I'm not at this time going to have any air conditioning or heating within the cab. 
I thought in the summertime it would be very useful to be able to open it up or even just take it off for better ventilation. Here I'm welding up a window frame, again for better ventilation through the tractor cab with the other door being open. Hopefully it'll help with the airflow through it. Something that I thought would be a good idea on this tractor cab would be to weld a one inch by eighth inch thick metal strip around both of these doors to just help keep the elements out of the tractor best I could. So this process right here was probably the most tedious through the entire tractor cab build. I simply took a wire brush and went through the entire thing with the grinder and I had to grind everything smooth, make sure there was no rust or anything else on this metal uh, because that's where the plexiglass is gonna fit up against. And so obviously I can't have weld beads or anything like that whenever I go to put that acrylic plexiglass up. So. That along with this step right here is I went through again the entire thing and I did about three or four different wipe downs using simple green. I just did a simple dilution of one to one. And again, I went through this thing, I think three, maybe four times, just wiping it out, down, trying to get that machine oil off of it. So it'd be easier to prime and paint uh, later on. So in order to kind of seal off the bottom of the tractor cab here, I went through a lot of a lot of different thoughts and I think the best one I ended up with is the one I, I'm doing here is I took a quarter inch thick by four foot wide rubber pad, kind of like I used earlier for, for those vibration, you know, vibration pads uh, for, the, for the frame of the tractor cab. Anyway, I took that and I'm, I'm not showing it here, but I rolled it out, got it approximately to size, and then I put it in the bottom there, keeping one consistent whole piece. Um, and that's kind of what, again, showed real quick. I'll show it at the end of the video in more detail, but that was actually, a, I thought, a pretty good idea because it sealed everything in and, and just helped it keep it together. Here I'm going through, getting ready to start putting the acrylic plexiglass. And in order, in order to reduce waste, I thought it would be best to just go through and make some templates using some cardboard that I had and duct tape where I need to. Um, this was actually really successful. I purchased uh, six sheets of three by six by eighth inch thick acrylic plexiglass for this build. And I did not waste a single sheet on the entire build so I, I was kind of impressed most of the time you'll, you'll mess up a piece or I will anyway uh, but on this one I didn't and so that was really convenient After pre-drilling these holes, I decided it'd be a good idea to use um, one eighth inch thick by a four inch piece of rubber using a punch out kit right there. And then along with some, some hex heads that were used for self-drilling screws that are one inch long, I thought it'd be kind of a good idea to, to build a little grommet on there to again, help reduce that vibration on that acrylic plexiglass. I'm afraid that it would sit there and vibrate as the as the machine is running. I don't want it to start cracking or anything like that. I really don't know if this process was necessary, but I just thought I'd take the precaution because I, I'd rather not redo this in the future. If I do have to redo it, then so be it. But 
uh, I'll at least have learned my lesson and probably should have went with a thicker piece of plexiglass. Uh, each one of these pieces of plexiglass was around $75 per sheet. Again, I got six of them, so it did get a little pricey. I was looking at the ones for about a quarter inch and they were very expensive. They went up to about $220. So I thought, while well, I'm just kind of doing this just to kind of discover what's what's expected what's going to happen make sure it's actually feasible to build this without messing anything up uh, i decided to go with the eighth inch and then again in the future if i need to i can go with the the quarter inch here i decided to put on a a rubber uh, like hood closed down piece uh, later on in the video you'll see i, I took it down I, I wasn't very impressed with it so um, i did change that a little bit Something extra I do want to mention while going through this is that not only did I pre-drill the plexiglass, I also decided to go through and mark it and pre-drill the, the one inch square tubing and round tubing when necessary. It was easier for those hex head screws to get through and again I'm trying to reduce the amount of times that I crack or break or anything else on that plexiglass. The other thing I did forget to mention earlier when, and, and even now during the welding uh, portions of these is this right here is a, a very hotly debated topic I've looked on tractor forums and all kinds of things and talked to mechanics is welding on a tractor. Um, I've heard that you can melt the computer, you can melt the alternator, you can do all kinds of things. So. If this is something you're deciding to pursue, definitely do it at your own risk. I just took the extra precaution of any time I'd go to weld on this, uh, I decided to take the battery cables off of the battery, and I did that for at least 30 minutes before I did that. I had a mechanic friend tell me uh, there's capacitors throughout the, uh, throughout the tractor, and you obviously don't want to melt those or anything like that. For the roof portion here, I decided to take 220 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander and sand down one piece of plexiglass and I primed it and painted it. There I just finished installing the struts and here I installed a sliding bolt. So thanks everybody for watching the video. I'd like to give you a brief overview of kind of the improvements uh, that I made to this tractor cab over the several months. So getting into it, this is what it looks like. Um, obviously I did go in here and put these right here pistons in along with these right here to help open it up and get some circulation in. Same thing over here on this guy. I can bring him in. Close him in. So... For the most part, everything is contained. There are a couple places, like if you notice right through here, um, it is opened up. But is what I did is I tried to preserve everywhere that I would have normally seen without this cab as to not, you know, um, I guess block my view. I definitely wanted to be able to see the tires because it's really important that, you know, you want to be able to see if you're about to run into anything. So it's the same thing over here. Down here is the same. I have a piece down here. Uh, that's a acrylic plexiglass. So again, the nice thing is, is through this entire one is it is fully serviceable. So if I ever have issues with these couplings, if I ever, which you do have to go down on that uh, fuel separator, if I ever need to take that apart, which probably will in a couple, in a hundred hours or so, I can easily get to that without without messing with anything. Even if I do end up needing to, to do anything, I've got these convenient hex head screws here that just will come right off. But anyway, this right here is kind of what it looks like on the back side as well. So acrylic and down here is the same thing. I can see it, which I guess it'd be more useful to see it like this, but Everything's open. I can see everything. Of course, there are some improvements I want to make in the future. For example, I don't have a cup holder here anymore, so that'll probably come in a later video, but 
This is what it looks like under. I have plenty of room uh, on this guy. I've got about, oh, well over a foot. So even if I wanted to wear a cowboy hat or anything like that in here, um, I can easily do it. But for the most part, it's all sealed up. No water runs inside. I did leave it out in the rain for a couple of days just to see what I could, well, how, how good it's sealed. But everything seemed to seal really well. Um, everything opens up. Everything's pretty smooth. And then maybe one of the last things I want to show you is how I did this floor. So this is all one consistent piece right here of this rubber mat. I believe it's a quarter inch thick. Uh, there were some places back here I wish I would have gotten a little bit more accurate. But for the first time, uh, giving it a stab, it, it actually worked out really well. Again, I can see in the back. Um, I did take some of these plates off and stuff to kind of get a better fit and adjust things. But... Other than that, it works really well. I'm pleased with it. It keeps the wind off of you, especially out here in the plains. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll be posting one pretty soon. Uh, maybe giving some updates and those kinds of things. So anyway, see you in the next one.